I know people think this is less funny and a bit less, uh, you know, uh, crazy. Welcome back on the channel, my name is Alex. We're back in the Pagan Cave, we're back in Brussels and uh, yeah, everything comes to an end. Altitude training came to an end as well. Now I'm readapting at uh, sea level and in two weeks from now, so in 13 days on September the 19th, I'm gonna be competing at uh, long distance duathlon world championships in Switzerland. I'm very excited. I'm also a bit nervous, but I think, you know, that's, that's just uh, how it should be. Um, all right, without no further ado, let's dive into today's topic, the ASEX Nova Blast V2. I just want to mention that this shoe was provided to me uh, for my review by ASICS via my uh, local running store, um, which is Trax. And, you know, for people living here in Belgium, in Brussels in particular, you are certainly familiar with Trax. Thank you very much to them for um, lazing with ASICS and myself and uh, giving me this pair for the review. First of all, the specs, uh, this is my size US 11 EU 45 and for the weight, we're looking at 306 grams, which is, you know, a bit more than, for instance, I think on your screen, you will have the Deviate Nitro 295, the Velocity 297, and uh, it's less than the Invincible, which is 321. Quite interesting and I think we'll come back to that. The comparison with the Invincible I think is quite relevant, not because the shoes are similar, but because um, I think this could have been um, the Invincible or the other way around, the Invincible, maybe V2 should be something like this. But we'll come back to that. Um, in terms of geometry numbers, I know you're waiting for this. Um, the midsole, which is flight from blast, and um, so the compound for this midsole is a mix of a blend of EVA plus olefin block compound, which if you remember well, in the video uh, last week or two weeks ago, the Salomon Eslap Polter review, which you can find here, upper right hand corner, um, it was the same type of compound, EVA plus olefin. And here is the same blend, but obviously done very differently compared to the Esla Pulsar. Um, we have a geometry score of 25 on the scale. You have the numbers on your screen and I try to remember uh, from the top of my head, but I measured a lot of shoes today, so I'm a bit confused. 25, I think. And this is exactly the same number or maybe one tenth less um, than the um, fuel cell midsole on the New Balance um, Rebel V2. And you know, I think many of you have the Rebel V2 as per the, the shoe rotation series. I know many of you have it, enjoy it. You know how soft the Rebel V2 is. And this is interesting to see that the geometry score, which I again say is only one variable in the whole you know, ride of, of a shoe, uh, but the, the, the geometry number here is the same as for the Rebel V2. Quite interesting. Uh, and we'll see if the ride is, is similar. We'll come back to that um, later on in the video. Um, width of the platform, it's more on the wide side of things. Um, and I think it, it's interesting in terms of stability, which is again a topic that uh, we'll tackle a bit later on in the video, but it's more a wide shoe than, um, than a narrow shoe. And um, you have some comparisons on your screen, but you know, it's, it's in the same ballpark as for instance, um, the Mac 4 or um, the, the Deviate, the Magnify. I think the Magnify from Puma is the, is the shoe that is the closest to this one in terms of uh, platform width and the Magnify is, is a wide shoe or at least has a, a wide platform. Um, drop and this changed compared to V1. Um, we are looking at 30 millimeters in the heel, 22 in the forefoot, 8 millimeters drop. And I think they, they lowered the drop in order to increase a bit the stability and have something less, you know, um, a bit less of that heel landing and a bit less of that very steep angle in the shoe. 
uh, in order to increase that, uh, that stability and make the ride a bit more agile and secure. Um, and I think they, they did great at it. 8 millimeters in terms of drop. Um, now the upper. The upper is also new compared to V1 and you can ask questions about V1 in the comments. I'm, I'm very happy to answer them. I have very little experience with V1. I didn't own a pair, a pair myself. I tried it a couple times and so I have an idea of how V1 um, rode, but you know, I'm not an expert of the Nova Blast V1, just so you, you are aware. Um, so here we're looking at something, um, I think we can call it a jacquard type of, of mesh. Um, it's very, very soft, very pleasant um, on, you know, on, the, um, on top of the foot. And um, you know, it has that gusseted tongue. It has quite some, some volume in the forefoot, in the toe box. Definitely not a narrow toe box. Definitely no issues with the length of the shoe. From that perspective for a daily trainer, it's almost perfect. And I'm quite enjoying that type of fit for a daily trainer again. But this is, uh, this is good. And the upper for me is very enjoyable. It's a, you know, the type of upper that I enjoy because um, they uh, fit well, they are soft enough, comfortable, um, and you know you don't have any rubbing, any anything like that. The the wrapping is very good, and that's also thanks to the gusset tongue, uh, which we have here. And I believe on V1 you did not have a, a gusset tongue. Um, the thickness of the tongue is more on on the thick side of things. At least you know a bit of plushness, a bit of of padding. They could remove a bit of that and make it more like the, the Hoka Mac 4 tongue. I know I come back times and times again uh, on the, the Hoka Mac 4 tongue, but this is one that, that I really think was, was successful. Um, but overall, you know, the, the, the lockdown, the fit is very good. Uh, the heel counter is quite stout. So for people who are looking for something more pliable, more flexible, with a bit more give to it, you don't have that at all here. Um, very plush, very comfortable, good lockdown, no issues here. Laces, and you know that when laces are too long, I say it, laces here are very long. You don't see it here, but I'm touching the ceiling um, because of the length of the laces. No, just kidding, but they're, they're really long, they could reduce that a bit, but yeah, that's, that's not uh, a major drawback, you know. Obviously, the insert is removable. That's for the upper. Um, so upper is, I'm, I'm very satisfied with the upper and um, I think there's very little to improve here. You know, no need to go and make it thinner. I don't think for a daily trainer that's, that's really relevant. Yesterday or yeah, yesterday I ran with it under quite high temperature, like, you know, in the, in the 28, 30 Celsius. It's not super breathable, but I didn't have any issues of, you know, warm feet and uh, something unpleasant. It's okay, so no need to, to change that. And the jacquard type of mesh is really good. Um, I'm actually hoping that they implement that upper on other models um, down the road. Um, now the midsole and the right of the shoe. So Flight Foam Blast midsole, EVA plus olefin compound again. Um, and I must say I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, I was expecting something too soft for my liking, which as you know, sometimes when shoes are too plush, I'm not very happy with them, especially for daily trainers, because I feel like my legs are working too much for um, the purpose of, of the ride and of the shoe in my shoe rotation. This is not too plush, this is just um, soft. It has the dampening and the, you know, um, the, the type of ride that you would expect from the EVA plus Olefin midsole. Olefin, and I learned that by, by some research, but also some, some chat with some people, has that anti-vibration type of property and you feel it here. You feel like, um, you know, the, the vibrations that you may feel when, when you, you land, they are reduced, dampened by, by that midsole, um, and still you have some bounce. I think maybe, you know, a bit less than, for instance, the Rebel, for instance, the Invincible, um, but you have enough bounce for um, a daily trainer and an easy type of shoe. Which the Nova Blast isn't really, because you can do more than just easy, and you can definitely go like re from recovery up to I think you know half marathon pace, maybe not marathon pace, um, no issues. I pushed it a bit um, actually to my half marathon pace, and um, it still worked well. So that's that's quite nice. And the drop I think is also a good thing here, eight millimeters. 
Um, for an easy day shoe, that, that's something that I enjoy. It uh, reduces a bit the tension on my uh, calves and posterior chain, um, which is good. Um, now in terms of stability and, you know, Novoblast V1 was known um, as being not the most secure, not the most stable um, shoe out there. And here it's, it's definitely better. Um, you know, my recollections of, of V1 compared to this make me think that this is um, what, you know, the, the right direction. I know people think this is less funny and a bit less, uh, you know, uh, crazy. But I think, you know, craziness is fine, but maybe not for um, daily trainers, easy day shoes. That's, that's the way I, I think. You may disagree and please let me know in the comments, but um, uh, that's it. In terms of, of stability, we have a few features that make the shoe a bit more stable. It's not a shoe aimed at overpronating runners, but you know, the width of the platform here in the heel helps. Yeah, the TPU overlays uh, here also help to, um, you know, rigidify a bit that um, heel color and that helps with the stability of the shoe. And overall, I think that the, the midsole, while being soft on the geometer scale, doesn't compress too much and therefore you don't have that um, arch collapsing that some people like myself experience in the Nike Zoom X Invincible. And this is why I want to touch base on the Invincible comparing it to this shoe because I think Invincible V2 um, would be great if it was leaning in the direction of this. Meaning that, you know, reducing a bit maybe the stack height, maybe, um, and trying to go less in the direction of bounce, but more in the direction of, you know, cushion, um, dampening, and maybe increasing a, a little bit, just a little bit the stability by maybe adding some, some TPU overlays here on the heel collar. There is one already on the, on the Invincible, I know, but, you know, making it maybe a bit higher or um, thicker to have something more rigid. You know, uh, just my two cents, but um, that's why I'm thinking that this shoe for me is actually, you know, better, for instance, than the Invincible because it doesn't have that arch collapsing, better than the Rebel V2. And I know I'm gonna hear in the comments that Rebel V2 is, is more fun than this, more, um, you know, more bounce and, and so on. For me, at least, that's, that's what I would pick over Rebel V2 or Invincible. Um, and I'm not gonna say uh, right now what I would pick between this and Magnify or other Max um, daily trainers because we will have a, a battle of daily trainers with Max uh, stack height. So uh, stay tuned for that. And I know it's long overdue, but uh, you know I need to gather the shoes and gather the data before putting together the video. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, price, $130, 140 euros. It's fine. I mean, you know, 120 would be better. One, one, yeah, 130, 120 would be the, 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 the right price point. I'm a bit scared after um, only, what, 20, 22, 23k in the shoe about the durability of the outsole mainly. I know they improved it a bit compared to V1, adding some cuts to improve a bit, you know, the, the, the flexion and the transitioning, which is cool. But you can already see here on my pair, um, you know, the midsole falling a bit apart. Um, so yeah, I don't know. If you have a V2 with more than, let's say, three, 400 kilometers on it, let me know how it looks in terms of outsole. I'd be very curious to see it. You can send me an email and um, yeah. If the durability is okay, then the price is fine. Um, but you know, I hope the durability is not, is not a major drawback I think it is one, obviously, looking at my, my outsole, but um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this review, guys. This is it for today. Uh, ASICS Nova Blast V2 will have it back on the channel for the um, max cushioned, max stack height daily trainers uh, battle. And um, obviously also announcing it, you know, a bit early, but it's in only three, four weeks of time, um, carbon data time for Q3 2021. We have lots of carbon plated shoes that released during Q3. So somewhere end of September, I guess more early October, given the number of videos that are in the making right now, we will have carbon data time Q3. So yeah, lots of exciting stuff coming up on the channel. In the meantime, enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride. Um, as always, go beyond your limits. And uh, I need someday to explain why I'm saying that, but go beyond your limits and uh, take care guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.